You know it's the summer when SummerSlam hits our screens. And the first person to hit our screens when SummerSlam opens is none other than the Hulkster Brother. And the fans in the arena, the fans at home, people in the back, I'm sure love this. Love to see Hulk Hogan at a pay-per-view, kicking the pay-per-view off. But he was really only there to plug the freaking network. So leaving TNA where he had some odd matches, odd moments, and he comes into the WWE only to now and again plug the network. He must have the most freaking easiest job there is. And maybe this is not the only thing the WWE have paid him to do, but right now he's done nothing else apart from plug the network for the WWE. And how much is it for again, guys? 9.99 yeah get the crowd going yada 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 but once he got off the stage he went back to his million dollar bed or whatever he was doing the first match to open the card was Dolph Ziggler the show off defeating the Miz to become the new intercontinental champion and yes this was the biggest surprise of the night but it did surprise me because I had my prediction on the Miz carrying the Intercontinental Championship to a later pay-per-view and eventually lose it to a returning Bad News Barrett, Wade Barrett. And Wade Barrett would return as a top base as the new Intercontinental Champion as well. Not saying I'm disappointed in this because Ziggler had, has and always has had a good fan base, people behind him. So for the WWE to give him another chance after the concussions, after the bad luck he's had. This was great. I like this. I was behind this. Not sure how long it's going to last, but in five weeks' time, The Miz, unless the WWE change their plan over the build-up, will get his rematch at Night of Champions, which you can watch on the WWE Network for $9.99. A part of me's thinking... This is going to be Bo Dallas' time as a heel to eventually build his way up to face Ziggler. Let's just see what WWE Monday Night Raw brings us. I thought that AJ was going to defeat Paige to retain her Divas Championship. Mainly because AJ has recently returned. She recently became the champion again. And I don't really want to see the title switch between both their hands. Like the WWE championship has in the past i wanted there to be a proper fight proper feud and maybe um, page to regain at a later pay-per-view but i thought the match wasn't bad not a terrible divas match some okay fights between them and they teased a possible future hair versus hair match as once or twice throughout the match they both pulled each other's hair out so if this did go on to become a hair versus hair match, but who of these two would go bold? I really can't picture AJ going bold, even though if she was to go off and take some time off, maybe she could go bold and wait until her hair grows back. Or maybe Paige, even though I really can't at this moment in time picture Paige bold. But another good championship match. But because of these two switch championship title to another wrestler, another diva, it made me think, okay, we've had two championship changes. Could this mean that Brock is going to somehow lose the opportunity to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion? I felt the Swagger versus Rusev match was being written as the match was going along because... It started off being advertised as a flag match by the WWE, by the commentators. When the match happened, it was just basically a singles match. You have Rusev getting his uh, ankle locked and uh, injured at the start of the match before the bell even rang, which made the powerful, uh, upgrowing, dominant Rusev look weak for the match. But when the match took place, yes, I'll give Swagger credit. He looked good. He was over. We, the people. The weed, the people joke, has finished. He's now over. It was really good. I really enjoyed this match. 
more than I expected to because really I weren't into this view. I weren't into Jack Swagger. But as the match went on, Swagger loses. And I thought the injured Rusev, the fact that it's a flag match, was to, so Swagger could pick up a win. So Rusev weren't going on this undefeated streak kind of thing. But no, because the WWE changed it from a flag match to a singles match, they couldn't have Rusev lose a match in that kind of way. So yes, Jack Swagger looked great. He was over. But Rusev won the match. You could say it did good for both men. But at the same time, Jack Swagger winning in a flag match was predicted wouldn't have done anything bad to Rusev. And the way the WWE tried to redeem themselves, the flag match idea, was when Jack Swagger was laid knocked out, a giant flag comes up behind Lana and Rusev, and the, na the Russian national anthem goes. I, I'm going to say this, as much as both men look good, I was disappointed in this. The match may have been good, but the payoff didn't quite work out. In the way they could have given these two another match at Night of Champions. Unless they've got bigger plans for Rusev. Now he's got a pay-per-view in. A big pay-per-view in over Swagger. Another mistake I feel the WWE made was the match between Ambrose and Rollins. These two have a heated feud. Fans are interested. They're interested. It has a good story. And... For some reason, they refused to go into a ladder match for the briefcase if they were planning to make Rollins win. They refused a street fight if they were planning for Ambrose to win. Instead, they went with a lumberjack. And tell me if I'm wrong. Over the years, lumberjack matches have not been the same. The lumberjacks used to just wait until the opponent got thrown out. The heels would be on the faces. The face would be on the heels. And it would just be the lumberjack biting and weakening the opponent before throwing them back into the ring. Now, as soon as they're out, in they go back in. Yes, eventually, after a few takeouts from Ambrose and Rollins, I like the way they still continued this uh, last minute idea of having Rollins try to escape Ambrose instead of fighting. And they go into the audience. So we got some aspect of a street fight in it. If the WWE realised a lumberjack weren't really working. Then you should have gone with the street fight. Adding Kane to this match. Giving Kane a somewhat of a pay-per-view moment. A SummerSlam moment. He could have been involved in the street fight. And attacked um, Ambrose then. Why do you have to come out to try and persuade the Lumberjacks to do their job and get them both in the ring? I'm not going to take anything away. These two still managed to find a good match. They really went at it at each other. It's just the WWE's choice of match type didn't seem to work with me. And at the end, when the Lumberjacks got them back into the ring, you have Rollins using the briefcase to knock Ambrose out to pick up the win. I'm glad that Rollins has a big win here. The WWE idea of how he got the win didn't quite fit into what the WWE had been building up between these two in the past. The street fight, a lad match would have worked. They could have gone full out attacking each other. A lumberjack, yes it may have been WWE's way to give wrestlers their paychecks. But I'm, I'm going to say this, I didn't enjoy this match type, I disappointed, it was, it gave, it gave Kane a job now he's in the authority to make sure that um, Ambrose didn't win, but match accepted, enjoyed, match type disappointed, even though they tried to make it work. I'm not sure if I would call this match the making or the breaking of Bray Wyatt. Because recently Bray Wyatt has cut great promos. 
maybe a bit repetitive. His wins in matches haven't really worked. His character in matches has been there. But something doesn't feel right about Bray Wyatt. So for him to go to another big pay-per-view in the WWE, to face another big name in the WWE, I do agree that Bray Wyatt should have won, which he did. And the way he did it after hitting two Sister Abigails, one outside the ring, one in, was great. I like the fact that Chris Jericho looked a bit freaked out with the way Bray Wyatt was acting in the match. So this match really worked. Bray Wyatt getting a few words after the match. The whole world trying to get the fans to join in, get behind Bray Wyatt. But I still cannot get the thought out of my head that Bray Wyatt should be a face. But the biggest compliment about this match is that Bray Wyatt won a match and the fact that the Wyatt family weren't there. Bray defeated a name in the WWE without the family. Full compliments to this match, the winner. I'm just hoping Bray Wyatt can continue with this, pick up wins. Yes, I feel the Wyatt family should continue being there, but not as much as they have in the past. Bray Wyatt should continue picking up wins. Maybe if they do another Chris Jericho and Wyatt match, Bray should pick up another win. This is just me complimenting the ma this match, Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho for putting on such a great match for SummerSlam and for Bray Wyatt. Stephanie McMahon went into her match against Brie as a heel, the one that fans wanted to see get beat down. But during the match, the fans seemed to be getting behind her, reacting to her in a positively way. And Brie Bella, who at some point in the match seemed like Roman Reigns, Rah! she was getting a reaction too. So this match was just... Fans liking one side, fans liking the other. I went into this match fully behind Stephanie. Taking nothing away from Brie Bella, I think her time will come and she will become a top diva, a good name in the Divas division, possible champion. But right here, Stephanie's first match in 10 years, they pointed out, and the fact that Stephanie is the boss and she's a McMahon, so she had all these different ideas on how she could win. I feel if she lost this, it really wouldn't do much for the McMahon name, Stephanie's big part in this storyline. Her overcoming Brie, Brie to overcome Stephanie later on, brilliant. And this match, I, I think it, it was great. Two sided, both looked great. It was great to see Stephanie in a match again and her attire yes yes and Brie yeah rock on and the way it went down is Triple H coming down Triple H gets a pay-per-view moment not a backstage mic segment or anything like that he comes down very pleased to see Nikki coming down after him and <laughs> Brie baseball slides Triple H down Triple H takes it because I'm sure he knew what was coming. Nikki pretends she's about to attack Stephanie, playing with the fans' mind, even though the fans that predicted there was going to be a swerve, it weren't no surprise. Nikki takes down Brie. Thank you, you broke up the Bunkadactyls, you broke up the Bella Twins. We do not need Diva tag teams. So with this broken this up, Stephanie gets the win with the pedigree again, living off her man's beautiful finishing move. I loved how this match went down. The question I want to leave here though is, Stephanie used all these different ways of beating down Nikki before, even recently pedigreed her. But still, she loves the money, maybe it weren't money, Maybe it was a future Divas Championship shot. I don't know what it was. But something made Nikki forget about all the heartache she went through to take down Brie. Mama's boy. Mama's boy. If I saw this correctly, if this guy is eventually becoming to NXT, 
WWE, you've lost your freaking minds. This commercial, this advertisement for a yet-to-name wrestler in the WWE, do not do it. Drop it. Make it a one-time thing. I didn't understand it. I didn't care. Just don't do anything more. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns, the match I did not care about because of my opinions on Orton have gone downhill. Orton has not been the viper, the legend killer, whatever you want to call him for quite some time. Yes, they showed some signs of him coming back a week or two before SummerSlam. But that's not really enough for me to forgive or forget the things that Orton has done over the past few months to a year. So going to this match, I was like, it should have been Triple H. I would have much rather seen the match before the main event being Reigns versus Triple H. But it turned out not to be a bad match. Seeing Orton go the way he did, Roman Reigns make it look like he was going to pick up the win. I actually thought this is not being a bad match. It was actually quite competitive. I saw both names being the way they should be in this match the spear where you thought the match could end into a power slam great spot the spear into an rko another great spot yes roman brain did some great things too especially when it comes to the move that has lost its power its dignity in the wwe orton's punt into a spear this match was better than expected I like this match. Roman Reigns gets a win over Orton. So the fact that Orton did not get the pay-per-view job, job done over Reigns, could this eventually build up to when Triple H has to step in? John Cena defended and lost his WWE World Heavyweight Championship against the one in the 21-1 and one who conquered the Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar. This match went down differently than expected. Yes, Brock Lesnar is seen as the beast, the animal, the conqueror. But he just beat down John Cena. John Cena got a few things in, maybe a few more than he did back at uh, Extreme Rules. But it was basically Brock Lesnar showing his power over John Cena, beating John Cena down. And yes, I could have done with seeing some blood, some more, you know, horrific stuff. But Brock Lesnar becomes the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So Brock Lesnar has been teased to be there for United Champions. But Paul Heyman is most likely going to do most of the talking with the two championships over his shoulder. Just like The Rock did, I would like them to see... Paul Heyman combine these championships so there's just one belt instead of two but then again I'm looking forward to Brock Lesnar coming to Night of Champions with both belts over his shoulder or if they do my idea just the one good match I'm not gonna lie you know whenever I get to see a good beat down on John Cena and a loss to John Cena you've got my money you've got my love you know, I didn't really, the only doubt I had on this match was Brock Lesnar fading away, going away for a while. We haven't got the champion there. We haven't got the championship there. What is going to be the drawing stuff to some of the pay-per-views and the build-up? I guess they're going to use Paul Heyman for the build-up and um, Reigns. Ambrose, Seth, Bray Wyatt, possibly if they could build up a strong enough story for the future pay-per-views that Brock's not going to be there at. But with this finish to the SummerSlam we've just had, I thought it was nicely done. I enjoyed it. Not a bad SummerSlam at all. But as much as I could praise this pay-per-view for what they provided us, apart from a few nitpicks, especially in the Rusev match, the Seth and Ambrose match, possibly the United States champion, possibly the tag team champion, but pushing them to a side. This has been SummerSlam. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Look out for Monday Night Raw review. 
I've been NJ, one half of the British Fist and the British Fist Evolution. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, goodbye.